Hi viewers, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to measure the electrical conductivity and pH of a substrate. I have taken cocoa peat as a, a demonstration example for this video but this method is applicable for most substrates. Why measure EC and pH of a substrate? There are multiple reasons why one would want to measure the conductivity and pH of a substrate. It could be just for knowledge purpose or you are evaluating multiple sources of cocoa peat and you want to decide which one is the best one to go with. And we all know the cocoa peat source that gives you a quality with EC lesser than 0.5 is usually the best one. So how would you find out? That is exactly the purpose of this video. To quickly give you an idea of what we are going to achieve, we are going to measure the conductivity of cocoa peat sample and also the pH of that sample. And I'm going to tell you as we measure how to do this procedure. For this procedure, we need the following things. Obviously, you want to have a cocoa peat source. I have a bag of cocoa peat with me. This is a composted cocoa peat and I have taken a cocoa peat sample of about 100 ml in volume, not weight, it is volume. The method we are going to follow is 1 is to 2 dilution method. So we take one part of cocoa peat, mix it with two parts of water and then let it settle and we take the water after we filter the cocoa peat particles and then we measure the parameter of the cocoa peat particle after it got suspended in the water. And for that, this is the sample I've taken. It has 100 ml volume of cocoa peat in it. Now, this 100 ml volume, I'm going to mix with 200 ml water. For that, I have with me 200 ml of pure RO water. I don't have distilled water with me. If you want to have distilled water, great. You can still use purified RO water also. The one thing you need to remember is before you use this water, please measure what is the conductivity of the water before you add anything to it. So that at the end from the resulting conductivity, we will subtract this number. So I'm going to do just that by measuring the sample water's conductivity. I use a conductivity meter. Take a sample and then measure it. I have sixty four micro siemens. So this you should make a note of what your source conductivity source water's conductivity is now we have noted that down 64 minutes now we have to mix one part of cocoa peat with two parts of water so i'm going to take exactly 100 ml i'll put this 100 ml of cocoa peat in this jar i've added this and i'm going to add Take another 100 ml. Pour it into this. Now you will see a slurry of salt. Now you can simply mix it with a good circular motion, or if you find that difficult, you can use a glass stirrer and do it. Now we leave this for about 15 to 20 minutes for it to settle. Hey, did you like this video? Then you should definitely attend my training program because we have tons and tons of topics 
we go to extreme depth to make you understand the intrinsics of hydroponics from the start to the end every aspect of farming every aspect of farm management farm operations and also a lot of tips and tricks to keep your life easy in the hydroponic journey so what are you waiting for sign up for my program see you there okay so it's been about 15 minutes now and there is some part that has settled and some part that's kind of floating but it doesn't matter so what I'm going to do I have a, um, a filter material here so I'm going to collect this on a different mug and I'm going to gently pour it So it's quite a slurry here, but it's just cocoa beans. Now, this is the leachate I have. Now I'm going to pour it in this and this is a liquid whose EC and pH we will measure and that will be the indicative pH and EC of the cocoa peat substrate which we took as a sample. Now let's measure EC first. I am getting a measurement of 2599 which is 2.5 millisiemens. Measure it one more time. Now it is 2603 which is about 0 0.003 higher than the last 2.59 2.6 is a number we can so we have already measured the conductivity this is in micro siemens 2600 remember we also measured the conductivity of the water before we mixed that was 64 we will uh, subtract that later. Now we will measure the pH. Remember in my previous videos, I have always told you conductivity is relatively faster to measure but pH you need to allow for the probe to stabilize at least for 30 seconds so that is exactly what I'm doing I'm not going to hurry in taking a, a measurement of pH let it sit for some time so that the number is not changing but it is stable now it is fairly stable the pH reading is now 6.4 well that's it so what we did is we measured the conductivity or electrical conductivity of the cocoa peat and also the pH of the cocoa peat sample by doing a 1 is to 2 solvent method we took one part of cocoa peat in, in this sample which is 100 ml and we mixed it with 200 ml of pure RO water you can use distilled water or RO water as well when you use either of these waters ensure you measure the conductivity of the water first so that we can deduct that at the end of the 
measurement so after that we made the mixture into a jug or a jar and then we mixed it thoroughly we let it settle about 15 minutes and once it settled we took a filter and unstrained the mixture so that we only have the solution left and the collected the cocoa peat separately and we measured the parameters for that solution that got collected in the jar this is the method you should follow to determine the conductivity and the pH of the substrate in our case it is cocoa peat when we measured we saw the electrical conductivity was 2600 micro siemens we, when, before the measurement I took the reading of the water and it was 64 so the actual conductivity of the substrate now is the measured conductivity minus the conductivity of the water so it will be 2600 minus 64 it will be 2536 which is if you convert it to millisiemens by dividing by thousand it will be 2.53 millisiemens which is the approximate number 2.5 it's safe to say you can say 2.5 millisiemens now is this the best source for hydroponics no it is slightly on the saltier side or lightly more saline so how do we fix it by running it through water multiple times or if you wash it once the leachate or the extra salt content can get leached away or you fill it in a bag or a pot water them for a couple of days and then once the water gets leached away after the third or fourth attempt your the leached water will not be measuring 2.6 it will be a lot lesser so this way you can find out the ec of even existing cocoa peat as well now this is for cocoa peat which you are planning to use for your farm now let's say there is already a plant in which the cocoa peat is used and the plants are growing how do you verify the quality of salt buildup or the amount of salt buildup in the bag for that we, we do what is called a drain analysis whenever you do a drip irrigation you measure the parameters for the water that you give to the plant likewise you need to collect the water from the bag and then do the analysis for that as well but that's for another video how to measure drain EC and drain pH till then thanks for watching bye bye